Hi everyone and welcome to my narrated time lapse of my painting of a wet dog in soft pastel. If you enjoy this please do subscribe to me here on YouTube and also have a look at some of my other playlists as I've got lots of real time tutorials on here as well. Also check out my Patreon channel where you'll find my full catalogue of real time tutorials and lots more there to help you progress in soft pastel. But enjoy this video. So I make a start on the background as always and just for the first moment or so of the video I'm showing you the reference photo that I was working from. Really lovely reference photo, quite an unusual angle of the dog. Also at the top the uh, rocks were cropped off so I decided to try and add a little bit more of the rocks at the top of the composition and I sort of had to make that up a little bit. But I begin by working the water area adding some sense of a bit of ripple or movement within the water and of course some reflections of the rocks at the top. But I come back to the rocks a bit later on when I've got a bit more of the piece worked and I can add a bit more of the colours of the rest of the piece into those rocks to tie them together. Uh, it's always good to use the colours within your main subject or your foreground, uh, also in your background, so that you get some colour harmony throughout the piece. But before I even make a start on any of the grass, I give myself a break and I start working on lovely Storm's face. This is Storm, the Black Labrador, and he's a wonderful working dog. Uh, my client told me lots about him, and this was him apparently waiting for the ducks to come in. And all that wet fur was just a dream to work on, really lovely defined fur uh, right up my street. And I use a lot of black, first of all, to lay down the base coats, make sure that I've got enough depth, enough darkness in there. Then rather than leaving it uh, such dull black, I come back in with many other colours throughout the black to warm it up, add that lovely Labrador sheen to the coat. Right through into my mid-tones and lastly coming through all of the fur with my highlights. So it's a really gradual process, starting with the darks and bit by bit building up towards my highlights. I'm working on velour paper for this and I'm always coming back in with the pastel pencils just to neaten my marks and really define those individual hairs. It's even trickier than normal fur. I find uh, the wet fur, it seems to clump together in uh, wet patches and you've got a lot of definition to find between the hairs more than normal. And also little splatters of water down his muzzle. But bit by bit, as long as you start with the, uh, your main dark tones first, then it's just about gradually building that up, taking your time, not coming in too early with your highlight colours, as you'll flatten the whole effect if you do that. You want to save those brightest highlights for right near the very end. And next month on my Patreon channel, that's exactly what I'm going to be showing my patrons in real time. We're going to look at this very footage and I'm going to show it in real time, explaining my choice of colours, uh, the types of marks that I have to make to get that really defined, wet looking fur. So next month on Patreon, I'm going to focus on wet fur and that's something that's not just useful for painting dogs, although it's something I've had to do quite often with my dog portraits, but any kind of animal that might have wet fur, that should be helpful for any, even wild animals, um, even thinking of otters or other water-based animals, that this would help you uh, be able to create that wet effect. 
So once I get a little bit of the top half of the dog completed, uh, I start work on some of the long grass. Now the grass around Storm was just as challenging as Storm himself and I really wasn't too sure how that was going to look in the end. I tend to work uh, complicated grass areas one piece at a time. So here I'm just focusing on that small section. Breaking it up into small pieces really helps. It looks like a really daunting task to begin with. And I'm always describing this to my patrons, how I break things up into bite size and it makes an impossible painting uh, much more doable. Something that looks really overwhelming at the beginning. That's how I cope with that, just breaking it up into smaller pieces. So we're zoomed right in on the fur at this point and it, it's a little bit overexposed here. The uh, footage is very bright with my studio lighting but I've left it like this because it actually really clearly shows my use of colour within the black and it shows all of my marks really clearly so it does look darker than this in person but I thought this would show in great detail all those individual marks that I've got to define. And even though it's a black dog, you'll always be surprised at how much colour you can find within black fur. Black fur and white fur, they really reflect a lot of other colours. So I'm always looking for uh, colours that you might find in there. And logically thinking about it, uh, you can expect to find blue, within black fur, if you've got a blue sky, for example. Or with this dog, I've put quite a lot of green throughout his fur and he's surrounded by green grass. So that also makes sense. If you can bring in some of the colors that are surrounding the dog into those reflections, then again, you're going to tie the painting together with a better color harmony. So onto the foreground and some of my footage from this piece actually got a bit uh, corrupted and wouldn't, wouldn't work on my video editing software. But there's just enough of the grass at the end to not bore you to tears, but to let you see roughly how I build that up. And it's just working in many layers, again, coming in mostly with the dark colors, working my way up to those highlights. So I hope you've enjoyed seeing this uh, very speedy version of what took me um, around 25 hours to produce. Again, please do subscribe here on YouTube if you haven't already. And here's a little hello from Lola, my Spanish bodeguero, one of my three dogs, always helping me in the studio. Thanks for watching.